everybody. Let's, let's take a second and think about this. So first, the, the hardest thing about this really is identifying it as a, as a two-sample dependent. And honestly, it's actually the easiest thing in the world to do. Now, I'm going to grab your study guide. Get out your study guide. Or at least look at your neighbors. Go to number 14 on your study guide. Number 14. Eastern Conference, Western Conference. So if you look at that one, Eastern Conference, Western Conference, so in there, yeah. you'll see there's two groups of data. They are not matched up. They're not paired up. Everybody see that? Yes. It's just one group of data, another group of data. That's just a regular two sample mean independent ordinary ordinary one. Now flip the page to, to D and look at D before and after. See how those are all paired up? Yeah. Does everybody see that? That's a two sample dependent where they're paired up like that. So all you have to do is subtract them. And once you subtract them, then it's just a one sample t test, just from chapter eight, a normal, ordinary one sample t test from chapter eight. So the first thing you should be doing with your, with your problem number um, six, the very first thing you should be doing with this is finding the differences. So track them out, find the differences. So, so figure out which one they're saying is larger. Um, on the homework, sometimes you gotta pay attention because sometimes they'll put the they'll put them in the wrong order on the homework. So your homework gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes they'll put the before into the after. So you gotta kind of pay attention to, to which way they're doing it. And go take a break. Go ahead and start in on the 
Um, so one quick thing, right? Quick comment. Again, remember um, two prop C tests and two sample T tests. Um, honestly, if you're doing the um, the two samples, a lot of times it's a lot easier to use. You can use either. You can use use the test to find your your um, your test stat, or you can use the formula. Either one. But sometimes the the, the test stat is just easier, or the sorry the um, test is easier. Um, and again, for two samples, it's going to have a two in front of it. It's going to have a test at the end of it. If it's a mean, it's going to be which one? Yep, T. Mean Mr. T. If it's a proportion, it should say proportion, two proportions. Right, so this one is for proportions. This one is for means. <coughs> um, here is a list of all of them. Right, these are the, these are the ones that we'll use. So the top part are the um, means, right? T interval for regular mean, T test for regular mean. If you have two means, it'd be two sample T test and two sample T interval. Uh, for proportions, again, proportions will have, always have prop in it. So one prop Z interval for an interval, one prop Z test for a test. If you have two proportions, then two prop Z interval and two prop Z test. Uh, or you can look on your handy dandy yellow sheet and you'll see at the very, very end when they talk about p-values, right, it talks about which test will match up with that one. Okay. Uh, don't forget on exams, these are the things I need you to do. Um, don't worry about the p-value. But you need to give me those five steps including drawing a picture. Um, so the two main things you need to know is whether it's a proportion or a mean, whether it's a confidence interval or a hypothesis test. How do you know it's a proportion versus a mean? Yeah, per percentage. A proportion will have a percentage. Um, or, so either I'll give you the, percent, the p hat, which you know it's a p hat because it's a percentage, or I'm giving you the number of yeses out of, out of n. So like 14 out of 92 two students. Right? Most importantly, nowhere is the word mean, average, or standard deviation, or, um, or an, a list of numbers, which is sort of a mean in disguise, where I just give a list of numbers, right, and expect you to find the mean. Um, or X bar, X bar and S, those are symbols for, for mean and standard deviation. Um, and again, it's the type of question you're asked. So a proportion looks like this. Do you have a dog? No. Do you have a dog? 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 So those are yes no questions, right? Not what I'm asking you, but the question that the researcher asked the people originally. Those are yes no questions. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. You're not sure you have a dog. Confidence intervals, if you remember those from way back when like two weeks ago. We covered them literally two weeks ago is when we covered it in conference notes for the first time. Seems like forever, right? But the first thing you do is find the point estimate. For a proportion, your best point estimate, your best guess is your p hat, what you got from your sample. Your, your sample proportion is your best guess for your population proportion. Your sample mean, x bar, is your best guess for your population mean, mu. Um, and you know, I'm a little bit worried because folks seem like they're, they're all freaking out. Um, mu, incidentally, is also spelled mu, so you can do it like that if you, if you are uncertain. But people seem to have trouble with this. Uh, it's it's kind of like an M, it's also kind of like a U. Okay. Um, step two, find a critical value. Look it up on the T table. For proportions, give me the bottom row of the T table. Um, and then you're going to find your margin of error, um, and then find your interval. That's not the last step. Your margin of error is not your last step. You still have to calculate the interval. In other words, take your p hat, subtract your error to find your lower limit. Take your p hat and your add your error to find the upper limit. You're going to have an interval. It should be an interval from here to here. Right? Remember before with the um, how far, how long it takes you to get to Oakland Airport? We guessed what, 40 minutes minus 15. 25 minutes 
40 minutes plus 15, 55 minutes. So you have like this interval, this range. That's the idea of a conference interval. You have your guests, take an interval around it. So don't forget that step. That's important. Okay. So in these following problems, do not solve, just identify what kind of problem it is. Whether it is a mean or a proportion, whether you can use a Z table or a T table, whether it's a confidence interval or a hypothesis test. And then I also want you to identify which section, the top or the bottom, and the left or the right, that you're going to use to find these formulas. I want people to get practice using the yellow sheet. All right, so the first one, so let's get a reader. Um, Francois, go ahead and read for me. Um, not so. Oh, just get to a, a medical. A medical investigation claims that the average number of infections for the uh, hospital is Southwestern Pennsylvania is 16.3. Right a random sample of 10 weeks and a mean number of 17.7. The, the sample sample deviation is 1.8. Is there enough evidence to reject the investigator's claim and add alpha to 15.05? Perfect. So I'm going to take 15 seconds on your own. Try to figure out whether it is a mean or a proportion, whether it's a Z table, T table, or is a hypothesis test or confidence interval. On your own, there should be no talking. Okay, now check with your neighbor. Now there should be talking. just as mean and average are an indication that's a mean. Okay, so what section of your yellow sheet should you go to for this? I want to put your finger on the correct quadrant for your test for this situation. Yes, 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 yes. Great. 
right, so is it one sample or two samples? One sample. One sample. Great. Everyone put your finger on the right spot. Where did you go for this one? And yeah, I picked the right, correct row as well. <laughs> score on the SAT math test was 515. The variable is normally distributed and the population standard deviation is 100. The same superintendent in the previous example wishes to see if her students scored significantly below the national average on the test. She randomly selected 36 student scores as shown at alpha equals 0.1. Is there enough evidence to support the claim? Great, 15 seconds. Is it a mean proportion, CT, compensated all hypothesis tests? And how many samples? Check with your neighbor. <laughs> so the mean or proportion? Mean. How do you know? It says average. Says average. Also, there's a list of numbers. Yeah, good. Is it going to be a Z table or T table? Z table. Z table. Z table. Me, Mr. T. Is it going to be a hypothesis test or a compensated bar? Hypothesis test. How do you know? Like the very evidence. evidence. Yeah, evidence, claim. Also, no mention of estimate or compensated bar. How many samples is it? One. Uh, Everybody, put your finger on it. All right, so this is the upper right, correct? <laughs> upper right. Top right. All right, uh, next, how about, um, um, according to a professional polling company, an unbelievably low percentage, 36% of all Americans said they were fans of professional baseball. A random sample of 200 people indicated that 88 were baseball fans. At alpha, at 0 0.01 is the proportion greater than 36%. Great, 15 seconds, figure it out. Check with your neighbor. Is it a portion or a mean? Proportion. Portion. 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 How do you know? 200. Yeah, there's 200 out of 88. There's a percentage. Also, there's seven there, right? Mm -hmm. No word, mean. Oh, portion as well. Um, is it going to be a Z table or a T table? Z. Easy peasy. So Z came, oh, so my degrees of freedom is going to be what? Infinity. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, okay, is this going to be a hypothesis or competent one? Hypothesis. How do you know? Mickey didn't say it's going to Ah, that's the question. It's asking a question. Yeah. And also, there's no competent interval and no estimate. Um, okay, so I'm going to figure on it. Figure on the right spot. students. Yep. So my degree of freedom would be 
Three, five. So to sort of get you to, to, to doing your degrees of freedom and doing infinity for, or what, what about this one? What's my degrees of freedom for this one? Yeah, it's infinity. So if you sort of think about for proportions writing down degrees of freedom of infinity, that will keep you from making maybe some mistakes of using the wrong table. Yeah. Uh, if your GF was 35, would you use 30 or 40? 30. Okay. 30. You round down. Oh. That's good. Um, well, Diego, go ahead. Assuming that we want to estimate the mean IQ score for the population of statistics students, how many statistics students might be running this whole thing for IQ tests if you want to have a percent confidence for the same? Okay, 10 seconds to figure out what kind of problem it is. Okay, is it a mean or a portion? Mean. How do you know? Gross. That's mean. mean, great. Is it a C table or a T table? T table. T table. table. What's my degrees of freedom? Oh, let's hold a second. Let's, before we do that, is it a hypothesis or a confidence interval? Confidence interval. Uh, how do you know it's a confidence interval? How do you know it's a confidence interval? Estimate. Great. Okay, so then my next question is what's my N? What's my degrees of freedom? We don't know. We don't know our N. We're trying to find our end. This is one of those find end problems. Does everyone see that? So everybody put your finger on the right spot on your sheet. And you should find out. Put, put your finger in the right, in the right general quadrant first. Just find the right general quadrant. Quadrant, quadrant. Okay, so, so in the right quadrant. So you should be on the left side, on the upper part, and you should be where it says min and sample size is crossed out. Does anyone have that? Mm -hmm. Yes, because we're not going to be doing them for means, but I just wanted you to, to um, be able to identify that is a minimum sample size problem because you will be doing them for proportions. So it's the same sort of concept. Um, so just as a reminder, even though you'll be doing them for means, you're going to find your end. And don't forget that if you end up with 96.04, you need to round up to the next total number. You can't sample a portion of a person, and you have to have at least 76.04. So if I walked in and, and I wanted to buy something, it was, nine, and when it was $96.04. I can't give them $96. I need to give them $97, right? Because this is the minimum amount that you need. Okay. Um, oh, and don't forget your error, if you find within, that's how you find your error. So my error is, is 3 in this case. Uh, Austin, read. A researcher wishes to test the claim of the average cost of solution in each of four years old called compared than $5,000. She selects a random sample of 36 former New York public colleges and finds the mean to be $5,950. The population standard deviation is $669. Is there enough evidence to confirm the claim at alpha equals 0.05? Great. All right, everyone, 10 seconds. What kind of problem is it? Um, Check with your neighbor. Mean. All right, what is it? Mean. How do you know it's a mean? Average, standard deviation, what's standard There it is. Uh, is it a Z table or T table? T table. How many degrees of freedom? Or how many, yeah, how many degrees of freedom? Uh, 35. Random sample of 36, so that's my N, so it's going to be 35. Is it a confidence interval or hypothesis test? Hypothesis test. How do you know? Yep, there's claim and there's evidence. Good. And there's no word, comments, or, or um, estimate. All right, so one sample or two samples? Two finger on it. 
Everybody take 10 seconds, try to figure out what kind of problem this is. 